Good start. morning, I'm Walt Mzembi, the Minister of Tourism and Hospitality Industry in the Government of Zimbabwe. Well, after many years in the tourism wilderness, Zimbabwe and here at World Travel Market is one of the busiest lands. It's the last day here, but trying to queue up, is, is, it's a long queue. Yeah, it is a long queue indeed. There's a lot of uh, traffic coming to this tent. It has been like this for the last four days, unrelenting. And uh, what we think is happening is uh, there's a lot of curiosity to say that this uh, product, which they thought was lost, is it really back? And you can see that everybody wants to get that assurance that the product is back on the market. They know it. They know it in the negative sense in the last two, three years in terms of the demarketing that was going around Zimbabwe. But uh, we have taken that demarketing as an opportunity, as a platform to launch our product back again. And uh, I'm quite happy to share with you that um, there's a lot of traffic which is translating not just into inquiries but into specific deals around uh, tour guides, tour operators and uh, travelers themselves who want to come down and uh, experience the Zimbabwean uh, experience in terms of tourism. So what is the message you'd send to the traveling tourism world about Zimbabwe? Well, the, the natural products in Zimbabwe is very attractive as you'd appreciate. Uh, it is not just my statistics, it's UNWTO statistics on travel and competitiveness. Uh, and they give us a 35 out of 133 in terms of international ranking. But when you factor in the politics, the product is, has been discredited by politics in the last two, three years. Now we are saying to the international traveler, the politics is now a thing of the past. It has been discounted, it has been removed, it's been dealt with by our global political agreement, which has brought all Zimbabweans to one table where we are talking now with unit of purpose around our country, uh, specifically in this sector, to say that uh, the interest, the national interest in terms of tourism should be put ahead of our own personal interest. And we are marketing the country as a team. And uh, it can only be ascertained by those who visit us. You can visit us on the various websites that are available. You can also come physically in the first instance to come and ascertain things for yourselves. We've just come, recently come out of uh, our own national travel expo, Sanganai, which we are, we, are, we are benchmarking now to WTM. And it was a tremendous success. We had over 300 international uh, visitors in terms of uh, journalists, uh, 43 media houses. They came, they had an opportunity to interact in the first instance with the President of the Republic, with serious photo opportunities with tour guys, travel operators, and they got the assurance that Zimbabwe is a very safe uh, destination. I can't think of any destination in Southern Africa which is safer than, than Zimbabwe. Uh, uh, by their own admission, other countries in the region are acknowledging crime rates of up to 58 murders a day. If we do one murder in a week in Zimbabwe, it will be headline news. So we are a very safe destination. Now, it's, it's been a good year as well for, for tourists. I mean, earlier in the year, America welcomed you back as a, as a tourist destination that's safe. Yeah, it has been a good year because on the back of the global political agreement and on the back of the inclusive government, um, the whole world removed travel warnings on Zimbabwe. But going further, we are now reconstructing the verbiage that is captured on the travel warnings to reflect the actual truth on the ground. And uh, we are receiving a lot of goodwill from international governments who are now endorsing the brand Zimbabwe in terms of its safety and security. We are now endorsing brand Zimbabwe in terms of its attractiveness. We have, uh, and we are endowed with a lot of natural attractions which you will not find anywhere else in the world. The Victoria Falls, for example, you will not find it in Europe. It is in Zimbabwe and therefore it will be an attraction to those who want to associate with such a global icon. We're in the process, of course, of rebranding it within the context of the green economy because we are seeing that the Copenhagen issues are becoming prime in the, country, in, in, in the world. And we are receiving assistance from the UNWTO in, the, in that regard. But most importantly, we have the wildlife in Zimbabwe. You again not find it in Europe. The whole spectrum of our seven species, it is found in Zimbabwe. But we, have, we also recognize that Zimbabwe cannot stand in isolation to the regional integrated product. So we are looking at the concept of peace parks. Between us and South Africa and Mozambique, we have one of the world's biggest wildlife enclave in the Gonarejo Transfrontier Park. But we are going further to collaborate with other countries in the eastern tip of the country, around Wange, western tip of the country, around Wange, 
to create what we, will probably be bigger than Bonarejo itself, the Kovango, which will include Namibia, Angola, Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe. So wildlife is a, a, collective, yeah, a, collective. a collective regional effort. But most importantly, as you'd be aware, World Cup 2010 is coming to South Africa next year. And it will be an opportunity for all doubting Thomases to really just cross over into Zimbabwe, which will be 90 minutes away from the venues of play. It will be closer, Zimbabwe will be closer to Johannesburg, for example, than uh, Cape Town is to Johannesburg, and 90 and minutes away. And, and what kind of links have you got between South Africa and Zimbabwe? Well, well South Africa is the platform and uh, uh, Southern Africa is the theatre and Zimbabwe is within that theatre. We have uh, um, um, uh, very classic accommodation in the Victoria Falls, which I think would interest the high-class visitor. We have a lot of dormitory accommodation in the border towns of uh, Masingo and Bight Bridge, two, three star, which can suit the, the soccer spectator. But above all, we have the juiciest beef in Southern Africa. It's found in Zimbabwe. We have the juiciest wildlife uh, game meat in, 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 uh, in, in, in Zimbabwe. But most importantly, we have the people in Zimbabwe, the people with the right intellect. At 98% uh, literacy rate, Zimbabwe can only come second to Tunisia. So we have no problem in terms of adapting to other cultures, in terms of languages and the ability to relate to any people who may be in the region. And we are anticipating that there will be 450,000 visitors coming into South Africa and into, in into the region. And by extension, we should be getting about 30% of that so, into Zimbabwe. So how do you think the, the World Cup will benefit Zimbabwe? It will do you think it will be a large knock-on effect? It, it will have a rub-on effect, a knock-on knock -on effect on, on, on Zimbabwe as an economy. We are anticipating that uh, we should make at least uh, twice our t annual turnover during World Cup. But most importantly, we should be able to treble our uh, arrivals during that, pe that period as well. But I'm saying that uh, if um, anyone comes to the region and is not able during that period to visit one of the seven wonders of the world, the Victoria Falls, then you would have done an injustice uh, to yourself as, as, as an individual. So we are showcasing the Victoria Falls, we are showcasing ancient civilizations in the form of the Great Zimbabwe, um, the ancient city of Great Zimbabwe. And uh, already from the visitors that came through to our Sangana Hyanganani uh, International Travel Expo, it has generated a lot of interest in terms of uh, attractiveness. Okay, Minister, thanks very much for sharing your thoughts and good luck with your future plans. Thank you, we need it.